Considering the empirical evidence from recent DNA analyses, it has been revealed that humans from the Papuan Highlands region engaged in interbreeding, with a group that shares genetic affinities with the Denisovans. What's more, this interbreeding event is estimated to have occurred relatively recently, potentially within the last 15,000 years. Consequently it is advisable to direct our attention towards identifying cranial remains, exhibiting characteristics commonly associated with non-sapiens humans in the regions of Indonesia, Papua, and Australia. According to the Smithsonian Institute, it is possible that there were two distinct migrations of modern human populations to Australia. But there is a more startling possibility, another human species was already present in Australia. Archaeological evidence indicates that human presence in Australia can be traced back to a minimum of 50,000 years ago. However, the oldest human skeletal remains discovered in Australia are estimated to be approximately 40,000 years old at Lake Mungo. The Lake Mungo cranial structure exhibits a relatively delicate construction, contrasting with much later, more robust skulls such as the specimen discovered at Cow Swamp, estimated to be only between 13,000 and 9,000 years old. In fact, the largest late Pleistocene cemetery discovered in Australia is Cow Swamp, in southeastern Australia. The morphology of this cranium may indicate the influence of cultural practices, involving head compression, but also may exhibit some non-sapiens characteristics. It is important to acknowledge that skulls exhibiting primitive characteristics, dating back approximately 10,000 to 20,000 years, have been discovered across all continents. The crania from Cow Swamp are described as having receding frontal squama, massive supraorbital regions, a supraglobella fossae, and preserving an almost unmodified eastern erectus form, with a complex of archaic characteristics not seen in recent Australian Aboriginal crania. The characteristics were thought to show the survival of Homo erectus features until as recently as 10,000 years ago, but this is highly subjective. Despite its significance, few have questioned the dating of Cow Swamp. According to one theory, the Cow Swamp people are younger than the shells associated with them, and only the younger bone dates are close to the true age of the remains. Another possibility is that the Cow Swamp people are older than the ages suggest because the samples were contaminated by younger carbon or reflect root penetration. OSL ages from shoreline sediments, as well as interpretation of the site's archaeology and geomorphology, may support the second hypothesis. As stated, the previous dates, which place the Cow Swamp people between 15,000 and 9,000 years ago, may have been contaminated by younger carbon. According to the New Ages, the Cow Swamp people lived on the Cow Lake shore between 22,000 and 19,000 years ago. The southeastern highlands experienced glacial advance and semiglacial conditions during this time period. Cow Lake's shellfish population also went extinct around 19,000 years ago. Nevertheless, the age of the cow swamp burials has recently been revised, particularly the KS9 specimen, the only burial excavated in situ. Optically stimulated luminescence dates for cow swamp contradict published radiocarbon dates. According to their OSL dates, the cemetery was in use between 22,000 and 19,000 years ago, rather than 13,000 to 9,000 years. While OSL may provide a date for some sediments, it is unclear whether this has any bearing on the cow swamp burial dates. Archaeologists are still divided on the dating, because the OSL dated sediments contemporaneity to the KS9 burial, or any other cow swamp burial, is unknown, and the stratigraphy above the burials cannot be reconstructed. The depth of the graves at Cow Swamp will never be known, and the age of the land surface from which the graves were dug cannot be determined using OSL dating. The original radiocarbon dating, and more recent dating of related sites in the region provide the best estimate of the age of the Cow Swamp burials. Dates on bone collaging from sites such as Nakari and Kubal Creek, also in southeastern Australia, indicate a time span of 13,000 to 9,000 years for Cow Swamp. However, some researchers argue that the cow swamp morphological patterns provide strong evidence that terminal Pleistocene skeletal remains from southeastern Australia are larger and more robust than their more recent counterparts. This includes taller average stature, larger head and tooth size, thicker cranial vault bones, larger and more muscle attachment areas, and larger endocranial volumes. The cow swamp people's mitochondrial DNA is conserved in modern lineages, but their distinct robust morphology is not. According to scientists, after 9,000 years ago, there appears to have been a gradual reduction in body size, 
with people of modern body size and shape appearing around 6,000 to 5,000 years ago. DNA sequences now show that the majority of robust and gracile ancient humans belong to a clade that includes living aborigines, which shows their relatedness. One theory is, that the cow swamp people's robust skeletal morphology may be explained by genetic isolation, caused by climatically induced population decline. This morphology is uncommon in Australia after the last glacial maximum around 10,000 years ago. OSL dating of cow swamp shoreline sediments suggests that robust humans lived in southeastern Australia, during the last glacial maximum. It should be noted that during the low sea levels of the last glacial maximum, Australia and Papua were connected in one landmass, that is known as Sahul. Papuans and Australians diverged genetically after sea level rose, however for most of human history, the world has fluctuated between extreme ice ages and short interglacials like the one we are currently experiencing. The Ngandong hominids are dated to around 100,000 years, but have also been dated to as recently as 30,000 years. Sometimes these fossils are lumped in with the much older and more primitive Java man specimens, but the Ngandong hominids are clearly a much more modern-looking specimen. A persistent topic of discussion in the field of paleoanthropology revolves around the classification of cow swamp and Javanese Ngandong hominids with the question being whether they should be categorized as a hybrid group of modern humans and Homo erectus or Denisovans. According to a paper by American paleoanthropologist John Hawkes, Australasia is widely regarded as the strongest case for a regional origin of modern humans, based on cranial characteristics shared by recent Homo erectus in Java and specimens S in Australia. However, it has also been proposed that so-called archaic characteristics in key fossil Australian crania are caused by artificial vault deformation. Hawks used cranial arc versus cord measurements plots, and scored non-metric traits commonly associated with artificial deformation to make systematic comparisons across groups, and deformation types to identify consequences of artificial deformation. According to the large comparative sample, deformed crania have flatter frontals and occipitals, and usually more angulated parietals in the sagittal plane than undeformed crania, regardless of the type of deformation. Some Australian fossil samples show evidence of both undeformed and deformed ancient humans. The Kubal Creek sample shows that undeformed specimens had more rounded frontals than recent Australians. Nonetheless, many ancient people from Kubal Creek, Cow Swamp, and Nakari have altered one or more cranial contours. Individuals from the Cow Swamp, in particular, plot with deformed crania from all regions. But using cranial contours and these non-metric traits to infer genetic relatedness between fossil Australians and later Indonesian Homo erectus is unwise, according to Hawkes. Hawkes' research looks into the ancestry of a specimen known as WLH50, a modern human specimen from southeastern Australia. Evaluating its ancestry is critical to our understanding of modern human origins in Australasia, because different human origins models predict different ancestries for this specimen and others like it. The replacement theory predicts that late Pleistocene African and Levantine specimens, including Herto and Amud, are direct ancestors of WHL50, but Ngandong hominids from Java are not. According to the multi-regional model, Pleistocene African, Levantine and Indonesia hominids are all possible ancestors of WHL50, making Ngandong Homo erectus an early Homo sapiens, Hawkes writes. The fossil WLH50 is a partial cranium fossil discovered in the Wallandra Lakes region of southeastern Australia. The WLH50 has many of the same characteristics as late Homo erectus, but some of the most notable WLH50 characteristics include a thick brow ridge, unusually thick, dense cranial vault, an extended neck area for muscle attachment, occipital bun, and robust size. Nonetheless, it also possesses a large cranial capacity of 1,590 cubic centimeters, within the range of modern humans. Based on the findings from gamma spectroscopy and thermal ionization mass spectrometry uranium series dating, it is suggested that the fossil under investigation may have an approximate age of 14,000 years. The latter technique has been proposed as a means to establish a minimum age for this fossil, as uranium absorption commences subsequent to burial. In the interim, the bone fragment's age was determined using ESR dating techniques, yielding an estimated age of 29,000 plus or minus 5,000 years. Meanwhile, the carbonate encrusting the bone, along with a freshwater shell, were subjected to radiocarbon dating, revealing that the carbonate had an age of 9,050 years, 
while the freshwater shell was determined to be 14,380 years old. Hawkes used two methods to test his predictions, a discriminant analysis of metric data for three samples that are potential ancestors of WLH50, and a pairwise difference analysis of non-metric data for individuals within these samples. The results of these procedures provided an unequivocal refutation of a model of complete replacement within this region, indicating that Ngandong hominids, or a population similar to them may have contributed significantly to WLH50's ancestry, according to the paper. As a result, Hawkes argues that Ngandong hominids of Java, and consequently some specimens in Australia, should be classified as an evolutionary branch of early Homo sapiens. Nevertheless, there is ongoing speculation regarding the precise age of this fossil hominid, as well as a debate concerning its ancestral lineage in comparison to other hominids from the late Pleistocene era. Additionally, the Ngandong hominids are of particular interest due to their striking resemblance to this hominid. The archaic humans from Indonesia are classified as Homo erectus, a different evolutionary species that could not have contributed to the ancestry of modern Australasians, according to this recent African origin theory. As a result, this theory of complete replacement makes precise predictions about the specimen's ancestry. Some researchers believe that a complete replacement theory of archaic humans is correct, and that modern humans in Australasia are descended solely from modern human populations found in late Pleistocene Africa, and the Levant. These ancestral modern populations are thought to have completely replaced other archaic human populations, including the Indonesian Gandong hominids. Following the discovery of a new human group, the so-called Denisovans, many researchers now believe that these Ngandong hominids could be southern Denisovans. A recent discovery in Cobra Cave, located in Laos, has unveiled a tooth that potentially is associated with Denisovans, or a species closely related to them. In light of the absence of a designated nomenclature for this particular group of Denisovans, we posit the Appalachian Cobra Man, as a potential designation, drawing inspiration from the established nomenclatural practices observed in the case of Neanderthal Man, and more contemporaneously, the Dragon Man from China. One of the other curious patterns to emerge was that many of the earliest Eurasian modern human skulls from the last Ice Age, including the Cro-Magnon I skull from France, sat statistically very close to Aboriginal Australians. Papua New Guineans, and another skull from South Africa known as the Hofma skull. Therefore, did this reflect a close common origin between Ice Age Eurasians, Native Africans, and Native Australians, 